converting one butanol to one bromobutane. The nucleophile for this reaction will be the bromide ions, which is generated from an aqueous solution of sodium bromide. The sulfuric acid will act as a catalyst in converting the OH functional group of one bromobutanol to a better leaving group, water. The byproducts in this lab will be one butene, dienbutyl ethyl, and the starting alcohol, one butanol. Any byproducts that will be removed will be removed by the extraction using concentrated sulfuric acid. As you can see from this reaction, you will first be adding the acid to convert the OH leaving group to your better leaving to your better leaving group water. Then, once the bromide ions add, it will add to form a transition state where both the bromide ions and the water are still on the molecule. The water will then leave to give you your product one bromobutane. Remember, SN2 reactions are concerted. This means it will only be one step. And the transition state is just that and will not actually be a product in the reaction. In your 25 milliliter round bottom flask, you will have added sodium bromide, DI water, one butanol. Also, with slow steady swirling, you will have added your sulfuric acid dropwise to the solution making sure that you are very careful with the sulfuric acid because it can cause severe burn. You'll also want to add boiling chips to the round bottom flask. You'll also set up your reflux system as you've done in the past with your water in on the bottom and your water out on the top. You'll also want some wool into the top of the condenser to make sure that none of your vapors will escape. Now, you'll want to turn on your heat slowly. Same thing that you've done in past experience when you reflux. You'll have the heat on at moderate temperature, and when it starts to reflux, you'll have to turn it down a little bit. Also, make sure that you're turning on the water and have a steady stream going throughout the condenser while you're refluxing. Also, you want to make sure in every other experiment that you've done that you need to have this condenser clasped together and the heating mantle on a ring clamp. After the reflux has started, you will start your time of 45 minutes and wait as it refluxes. After 45 minutes of reflux, you can see that two layers have formed. The top layer is our organic layer, which is where your products will be. The bottom layer is the aqueous layer, which is the sulfuric acid. Now you'll be setting up a simple distillation as you've done previously. As you can see, we've set up a simple distillation now. You want to make sure that everything is clamped, as well as you have your water in here and your water out up here. Also, you want to make sure that your thermometer is below the entry for the vapor so that you can accurately tell the temperature. You want to make sure that you're distilling this at 60 to 95 degrees Celsius. sure that you collect it in a large test tube as shown. Once you finish the distillation, you'll want to remove it. You want to remove the tube and start your transfer while the other partner will disassemble the mantle and remove it from the heat so it will cool down as fast as possible. You want to make sure that you're unplugging the transformer. transfer, you want to make sure you take the large test tube with the distillate and pour 
the materials into a small test tube. You'll then do a complete transfer by adding one milliliter of water to the large test tube and adding it also to the small test tube. As you can see, two layers will form. The bottom layer is your one bromobutane, contains your one bromobutane, which will be you'll be removing from this tube and placing into another test tube. And when you have just the one bromobutane solution, you'll then be adding one milliliter of concentrated sulfuric acid in order to remove it. You will then use a pipette to remove the bottom layer of the small test tube. You will place the bottom layer in another small test tube when you will add your concentrated sulfuric acid. As you can see, in the last test tube, only the top layer remains. Now make sure that you've gotten only the bottom layer from the first test tube into your second test tube. As you can see, the layers in the test tube are very distinct and you'll be able to tell if there's been an impurity in either tube.